Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a little bit what is coming because uh, I didn't post last week too many videos and uh, I was just looking for uh, for deals and I did find nice things. Um, now first of all I still need to show that one that is the LM399. It's a voltage uh, standard. Um, I had some problems in the beginning with the uh, when I, uh, the supply voltage changed, it also changed the output, but I think there is also a little often, so maybe I was too fast. So uh, I do a, a new check with that. I have here, and I have this one already for a few years. It's the Philips uh, PM2521. And uh, it turned out to be pretty accurate still. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you that. We're gonna do a teardown and uh, let's see how good the values are. And uh, I've hit the Sickland, the SDM3065X, but it is an SC version, so it has a scanner card. And I still want to make some sort of breakout box. So instead of putting these legs here in front, I'm gonna do two little black boxes, and I use that as feet. And then in front of the feet, I have all these little bananas. And uh, so we have a bunch of bananas here in the front and then you have a sort of a breakout box and then I can just put it in my wall and still have access to the scanner card. So let's see how that uh, works. And also I found the pulse generator and I just wanted to have it. It is the 8112A I think and it's uh, 50 megahertz but it's only doing pulse. It does have an error. So we're gonna do a few quick tests just to see uh, how it works. I already showed you once the 8116A. It's also 50 megahertz, but that's more a function generator. So that actually does uh, sine and waves and squares. And this only does pulses. Also, it doesn't show you a frequency, but you have to calculate it in seconds, milliseconds, nanoseconds, etc to find your frequency. So that's cool because it's a 50 megahertz. So let's see if we can fix it. We just gonna clean it for sure. And of course, we gonna have a look on the inside. Yes, and because one can never have too many uh, power supplies, I found a few also in the local uh, eBay here, in the Marktplatz, and they were very, very nicely priced. So I bought uh, both of them. And it is the HP 6203B, and it's seven and a half volts, three amps. Uh, but the scale is very nice because you can switch it from 0.3 or sorry 0.9, 9 volts, 4 amps or 0.4 amps. So you can really see properly even though it is analog and they actually look quite good. I, I can zoom in a little bit. But as you can see it's quite a nice sketch. And even though they are both a 6203B version, uh, they should be exactly the same. But as you can see this terminals here are already completely uh, newer than this one. So those power supplies we also can have a look inside, clean up a bit because they are working, see how that goes. And if you remember an older video, uh, it was I think the analog also double from Farnell, Vic ET30-2 or something. Uh, here I have another one digital and it is from what nowadays is called the uh, TTI. It is the Termly and it's the PL320 and I think it goes to 30 volts and two, two or three amps and uh, it's a double power supply and you can actually see in the front they just have two together separate power and uh, it still looks very good. Here it is. So we also can have a look inside in this one. Maybe we can adjust a little bit, we clean a little bit. Well, cap is missing, but I think I have those. These are also like the four nails I can order. And uh, output on off. It looks proper. And uh, yeah, it still looks good. Kind of a lucky find also this one. Oh, and if you like him, or well, this is just a receiver. Uh, I think it featured already on one of uh, the videos also. I think it was about the active whip antennas. 
and uh, this is the ICOM R70 and it's a HF receiver from almost zero I think 100k up to 30 megahertz and uh, so I said this is the R70 and I found an R71 that is the one that followed it up and it was a little bit improved both don't have FM but you can install it as an FM uh, option it's an option board it's uh, well not that easy to get anymore or you already pay a fortune but I did find one also so here we have the R71 the improved one and it also has uh, memories you can see it is really a little version newer it looks a little bit better they have here also the, the metal ring around the knob I will zoom in on that and, uh, and but there are also modern version of those so they are all uh, HF sets there is also an R72 well these were uh, quadruple mixed uh, this one is a bit more normal it's only three times and uh, but th these are the same so here we have the 70 the 71 and the 72 and the 72 I already also have, have for a couple of years but I just never uh, showed them uh, but I just completed it now with the uh, R71 so here they are well, we're gonna have a look at that of course we open them up and uh, I will install the, the FM uh, module and I also here you see a speech button and we I also found that board and that was actually quite cheap I was surprised and it probably was also a lucky find and uh, it can talk it will when you push the speech button it will say the frequency so that's also nice and uh, here is the Air 72 it's more modern as I said uh, it just have FM built-in uh, standard so those are all uh, HF but of course you have also the the real communication receivers that go from I think from 30 megahertz or 25 because they are a little bit uh, overlap up to 1300 and I think the newer one even go to, uh, to 2 gigahertz and I also have that one that is the R7000 I don't think I showed you that one and yeah I think this one was later because if I look at the whole design and the keyboard it actually is supposed to be here if you look at the, what they look like so uh, I think they built first this one then this one and then decided oh we also built one to uh, to get the rest of the frequencies and of course there is also an R71 and I found this one last week So the 7100 and uh, yeah that one of course looks perfectly like that so that just skipped one here this is supposed to be like this and also we're gonna have a look inside <laughs> yeah and of course for the classic viewers I did not forget because I still have a very cool little uh, it's a uh, galvanometer with a little light and uh, I think it was from Leeds and uh, Nootroop uh, so that one but uh, it is it's uh, stack away I cannot show you now I have here from GE a very very old amp meter amp clamp meter look at this pretty pretty cool so we're gonna have a closer look at that one I'm not sure we can test it because it goes up to uh, from 15 amps up to uh, 100 no 600 amps so uh, I don't think I use that much I think you can add somewhere also plugs because it can also me measure voltage that I need to find out how that works um, but kind of cool and uh, talking about old decades or uh, white sound bridges I have found another decade but I cannot find anything on the internet so I don't know maybe you can help me with that let's have a closer look so here it is and it actually looks quite cool 
you can turn from 0 to 10 and uh, no, 1000 ohms, 100 ohms, 10, 1, 0.1, 0 0.01 even. And uh, what the brand is here, the, the Morer Mullenbach. Uh, but I really cannot find anything on the internet. So if you can, um, then, then I maybe can find out where it comes from. Well, it seems to be from Germany. Uh, this all seems very German. Uh, but I don't know the year. But of course, we're going to open it, clean it. And uh, but all the information that I can find, that would be great. But it is not only the classics, because of course, nowadays they also make uh, whetstones. And uh, I found one also. But it is kind of big. Let me put this away. <laughs> this one. And first I just thought, oh, it, it was not expensive. So I thought, oh, this would be great because then I have uh, a modern uh, decade. Because this one also goes from 0.1 up to 10,000. And this is pretty modern and it just feels whew, everything is so smooth. And uh, it says guarded Redstone Bridge. And so that means we also need to find where to adjust the balance. And that seems to be here in the compartment here. Uh, yeah, they put a weird modification. So let me zoom in because these resistors look quite cool. Yeah, and this is also from uh, Leeds and uh, North Troop. They seem to be the specialist in uh, this. And look at this here. You can set your other one here you have the calculation how you set this this i don't know the battery or not maybe it it can also do internal the battery <laughs> instead of external and here you just set your resistors how you want it to pass through this looks nice and usually this is transparent because then you can see how it is set. But uh, yeah, the guy also told it to me. I think he didn't like it or he was, I don't know, maybe it was shiny and he didn't like it shiny. So they put something like this. But uh, so I'm going to put that back to uh, original. And uh, yeah, also I need to try to find out a little bit more than I know now. But it will also be a nice project just to see what it looks in the inside. And uh, if it is just as uh, nice as the other ones. So I would say there is uh, still enough material to, uh, to play around with. Uh, this will probably be my next uh, project, the Termbly double power supply. If I don't get distracted because I still have a few things uh, coming in the mail. Uh, but I think this will be nice for the next time. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.